So we'll talk to Philadelphia Eagles. And so the Philadelphia Eagles had a made a really pick or a made a pick in this draft that I really like. Tyler Steen from Alabama, second round. So Steen. Steen was a guy who was kind of forgotten about on the Alabama offensive line, and I say that because they they had some guy the years prior they had some guys go higher, um, so people thought higher of Jedrick Wills in years prior. Who's the guy like Evan Neal? Tyler Steen was a guy a trans, former transfer from from Vanderbilt, and he came in and people people like Steen. He had a good year, but he was kind of. Now you don't want to call him a one-year wonder, but it was one year where he was he was just, he was good, and then people started as the draft process went along. People were like, "Yeah, Tyler Steen. He looks the part." Who was this guy? A transfer from Vanderbilt, really one full year starting in Alabama, and you're like, "Yeah, Tyler Steen. You know, really nice season for Alabama. Really was a a key piece to to the Alabama offensive line having success." So. You look at Tyler Steen, and as a, as more and more as the tra- draft process went along, you saw him more in more and more of uh, some of the top offensive tackles. I think some people had him four or five offensive tackle. I think that's what I had him fourth or fifth. I didn't watch a lot of offensive tackles, but I did watch Steen's tape, and I was um, really impressed by him. Uh, Arland Scouting has him projected to start at right guard, so. This could be a really, really good offensive line again. We'll see if Steen can even help bolster this offensive line even to a higher level than it was last year. I know that would be hard to do, but if he could do that, then, man, this is a a scary, scary good offensive line potentially as it it was last year. So I was listening to a Jalen Hurts talk, and Jalen Hurts – you know he's a he's a well spoken guy. Sounds like he he's hungry. Seems like a guy that's just is very humble. Just wants to work. It seems like this is a guy. Jalen Hurts to me strikes me as a guy who he doesn't he doesn't say a whole lot because he knows deep down that the work he's putting in. So I think he kind of to me he the Eagles pay him all that money. It, it to me it really is because Jalen Hurts kind of is is the identity of what the the Eagles are building here. They are a team that they want to just you know put their head down, not be flashy, not have a bunch of outspoken, big you know ego, big personalities. They just kind of they want guys like Jalen Hurts to just just work get after it, help us produce a high. We want high end talent. We got we want guys that just. Lunch pill to work every day. Just get after it. Don't really, don't rub it in. Don't, don't make a fool of yourself. Um, you know, being overly cocky. Not that the, I mean, there's obviously some outspoken guys in the NFL, uh, which is fine. But you know, the Eagles. It seems like they don't really want as many guys like that. And I know uh, taking Jalen Carter kind of gave them some publicity uh, for bad reasons because of the incident, but. To me, Jalen Carter, he's not a he's not really a overly cocky, like outspoken, um, wants a lot of attention type of guy. To me, I think Jalen Carter, if his if he is focused, he's a guy that's kind of like Jalen Hurts, just wants to get after it. Nicobe Dean is another guy, a guy that loved football at Georgia. So I think the Eagles did a good job of paying Jalen Hurts, a guy that fits the identity of what they want, and then just continuing to bring in top end talent. It's cool it's cool to listen to Howie Roseman how devoted he is to <clears throat> bringing in top end talent in this roster. That that is really what this guy is on a mission to. And it seems like football is his purpose, his passion in life and he's done just a, a fantastic job of you know, first one thing is trial and error too. If you notice Roseman was making some mistakes earlier in his career and then now later in his career, it seems like he's done a, a better job of not having as many misses. And he's just, I think his goal is let's just go, let's take some swings for the fences. Let's dedicate so much time and resources getting, taking risks on guys that are top end athletes. Like you look this year, they got Keely Ringo in the fourth out. Like Ringo, yeah, there's some stiffness to his game, but. Ringo, former five-star recruit, that um, a guy had a guy that has some some upside athletically. If you can really 
if you can get the most out of the skill set he or some of his positive traits because Ring, Ringo's a guy that you're gonna have to focus on his positive traits and those are straight line speed and size that's the the that is the bottom line of Keely Ringo's game and I think that's Holly that's Howie Roseman he wants guys that can what can can we take let's take guys with with top of top end level traits maybe and then these are the guys that you know maybe are uh you know high risk high reward kind of like Jalen Carter I know Jalen Carter I think Jalen Carter probably doesn't have a low four but he does have a high ceiling so to me that's what Jalen Hurts says this guy who you know during the the draft evaluation I don't think everyone a lot of people were saying Jalen Hurts is a a wow you guy with an arm with his arm strength but he is a guy that can make accurate throws he's improved as a passer every year in college so the Eagles were like, you know what, even though second round, even though there is some question marks about Jalen Hurts, this is a guy who is going to get after it and work, and he's he's devoted to improving. And to me, that fits. You know, they asked, back to the 49ers and Kyle Shanahan, they asked Kyle Shanahan what, uh, what it takes to identify a, a good college quarterback that's going to be good in the NFL or something along those lines. And, you know, you have a – it's kind of hard because – some guys traits in college make them good and some guys that traits in the NFL or it doesn't always translate to the NFL but it seems like guys like Josh Allen, Jalen Hurts, these are guys that just just hung you see like some hunger to get better. You know, the NFL is where NFL I've always said is where talent can talent can get you to the NFL but do you have like the NFL is a combination of talented guys who have the psychopathic, the drive every day, get after it mentality. That's the NFL. It's a mix of those guys, and then a lot of guys. You see, and then a lot of guys that get weeded out are guys who just have freakish talent, but just really just average to adequate work ethic. And a lot of those guys tend to get weeded out of the NFL, even the, even if they do find success for a year or two, or some of them were first round picks. But, uh, yeah, I kind of went off on a tangent there. But, yeah, the Eagles, uh, certainly high-end talent. Like the 49ers, it's going to be a team that's it's going to be a really, really tough out uh, in the NFC. And a team who, whoever makes the, the playoffs, and this is a team that you just do not want to see in the playoffs. Uh, I know the Lions um, will be – my Detroit Lions will be in the mix for making the playoffs. You know, the Eagles are a team that will be would be a nightmare scenario. It's going to be a really tough game. But yeah, we'll we'll see see what happens with the Eagles. Certainly, things uh, still pointing in the right direction, even after a year with a uh, the narrow loss in the Super Bowl. Thanks for tuning in to the Brand Partial Show. Make sure to stay tuned for episode more episodes and clips from the show. Till next time, peace.